some Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I'll show you how I love to make my slow cooker lasagna. So it's basically everything we love about a traditional lasagna but made in a slow cooker. So it's easy to clean, everybody loves it um, and it's just so easy, you're gonna love it. Let me run you through the ingredients to make the sauce and then later on I'll show you the remaining ingredients. But for now you're just gonna need some ground beef, some chopped onions and garlic, Italian seasoning, salt, olive oil, and some canned tomatoes. Now I am thrilled to be partnering with Red Gold again this year in launching their Help Crush Hunger campaign this October. If you've been around for a while, you know I partnered with them last year in October to help crush hunger. And so we're doing it again this year and it's really easy. I mean, it is crazy to think there are millions of Americans today that suffer from food insecurity, which basically means they don't know where their next meal comes from. And that's where you and I are gonna come in and help crush hunger this month. Now, all you need to do is you need to purchase a Red Gold tomato product. And for every Red Gold tomato product sold, you are are helping feed a family in need. Now this year we have a goal of 2 million meals donated through Feeding American Food Banks. So get out there, first of all you're going to want to make this lasagna because it's delicious. So get out there, buy a Red Gold tomato product and help feed a family in need and you'll be doing lots of good. Now let's get started with the recipe because it's so easy. Now, I've got a pan here with a little bit of olive oil. My ground beef is quite lean so I add a little bit of olive oil to my skillet but if your ground beef is not that lean then you can totally open it. Now to my ground beef, I'm going to just break it up as much as I can with my wooden spoon but I'm also going to add the onions and garlic now because I'm not really looking for the ground beef to like develop a lot of color or crisp up or anything. I'm just looking for it to get cooked through and so I'm just going to kind of break it apart. I'm going to add just a pinch of salt because you want to layer every, you want to salt every layer of your dish obviously. I'm just going to let this cook for a few minutes or until I feel like the beef is just about cooked through. That looks fantastic. You can see there's not a whole lot of grease for me. There's nothing for me to really drain, so it's good. But if you're using a fattier kind of ground beef, you might want to discard any grease left over in the bottom of your skillet. So now for this recipe, I'm using two cans of the Red Gold diced tomatoes and I'm also going to use one can of the tomato puree, of the Red Gold tomato puree. Now because I'm using three cans of Red Gold tomato product, that is providing three meals to family in need. So get out there and make this recipe because it's really good and you're helping out three families. So what I like to do here, because there's still a little bit of flavor in this can of the tomato puree, what I like to do is I like to just add a little bit of water to my to my can, swish it around, don't lose any of that flavor, and then add it right in. I'm also going to add a pinch of my Italian seasoning. This has got a lot of dried herbs and then dried garlic and whatnot, and another pinch of salt. Now because this lasagna is going to be made in the slow cooker and it's going to cook for a few hours, it means that I don't have to cook my meat sauce for hours and hours on end. This is just going to need to simmer for about 40 minutes or so and once it's there, we're going to get building our lasagna. It's going to be so fantastic. And now I'm going to leave a link down below to helpcrushhunger.com where you can go check out and see how many ways you can help crush hunger this month. So I encourage you to do that. But for now, I'm just going to let this simmer, clean up, gather my remaining ingredients and then we'll get going on layering it up. Now my sauce looks fantastic. It's been simmering for 45 minutes. I turn it off and now we're getting ready to layer. Let me show you the rest of the ingredients. They're not very many but they're very classic lasagna ingredients, um, at least for me anyway. So all you need are some classic lasagna noodles. These are just the standard regular lasagna noodles that you would traditionally have to boil first but in this case we are not. And then you need lots of ricotta, whole milk ricotta. And the, you can see here I've got lots of shredded parm. I need an egg, lots of mozzarella and just some salt and some water. Now I want to add a good pinch of salt to my, to my ricotta. Risotta. To my ricotta, you might be thinking that that's weird because it is, you know, there is parm in here and parm is quite salty, but you have to remember, we are not boiling the lasagna noodles. So we have to make sure that every single layer is really well seasoned to compensate for the lack of seasoning in the lasagna noodles, if that makes any sense. All right, to my ricotta, I'm also going to add my egg and I'm just going to mix it to all together, all three ingredients with my fork until well combined. Now I have seen many, many people use a cottage cheese in their ricotta filling and if that's what you're used to, 
and the lasagna filling with the ricotta. And if that's what you're used to, by all means, cut this in half, do half ricotta, half cottage cheese. But I've never done that, so I've always just used ricotta. That's how my nonna makes it, that's how my mom makes it, so that's how I make it. All right, this looks great. I'm gonna set that aside. Now I've got my all my components ready. Sauce, noodle, ricotta, mozzarella. It's like a, it's like a good song. <laughs> All right, get the insert to your slow cooker close to you. Now, you have to make sure that your slow cooker is gonna be able to fit everything in it. Now, what I'm going to do now, the first thing I did was I oiled the inside and the sides, the base and sides of my slow cooker. That just means that it helps your lasagna noodles not stick. All right, I'm gonna show you the first layer because then you just have to repeat, okay? You take, for the very first layer, I just need a little tiny bit of sauce here, just enough for the noodles not to stick. I'm not even counting this like a cup or anything. It's like maybe a half a cup, just like that. Just enough so that my lasagna noodles don't stick. Then you put three, for every layer you need three lasagna noodles. So the first one in the center fits great, but I know that the sides are not gonna fit. So I just cut them in half, right? Get in here so you can see better. And then I kind of overlap them like so. So you cut them in half, and you overlap them like so to kind of make them fit because that's just the only way that this works, just like that. Now, your lasagna noodles need moisture, they need sauce. So ordinarily, if I was making a traditional lasagna that I would have to bake, I would do ricotta at this point first, but that, that's because my noodles would have been cooked. And here, they are not. So I'm just gonna do some of the meat sauce here. You wanna make sure you don't add too, too much because you gotta have a lot of layers of this, right? Then you add one third of your ricotta filling. I'll show you. And if you don't, if you don't make this all perfectly smeared or anything like that, fine. Because once it cooks all together, it kind of starts melting and it does everything it needs to do. So you add a third of the ricotta. Kind of just smear it with your spoon the best you can, but really, like I said, don't go crazy. The only important part is that your lasagna noodles are covered. That is great. And then a quarter of your mozz. So you see, it's easy, it's real easy. You don't have to um, get a pen and paper out or anything, but it's really easy. And now you just repeat. So, three noodles, three noodles, sauce, ricotta, Mats. And you keep doing that until the very top layer is your three, la uh, three noodles, um, three lasagna noodles. And then I'll show you how to top it off. And now for the last layer, you just take your noodles. And like I said, you, um, you have to kind of fit them, cut them to fit your particular machine, your particular machine, your particular slow cooker. And then you just take all of the sauce because this is the point where you wanna make sure that your noodles are well covered in the sauce. Um, that way they don't dry out on the very top. And you just smear it really nicely. And then the very last thing I need to do at this very point is just take, you see how that's like perfectly covered right there? Mm. I just take a little bit of water, you run it around the edges, and now you put this on really low, you know, you turn your slow cooker on to low, and you let it go for a total of three and a half hours. But in two hours, I want you to go back to it and top it with your remaining mozzarella and let it go for that hour and a half. And I'll show you what this looks like in three and a half hours when it is just cooked to perfection. All right, so in total, my lasagna was cooking for three and a half hours. And remember, after the first two hours, I put the remaining cheese on top and let it continue cooking for an hour and a half. And then once it's, gotten, once it's cooked for the full three and a half hours, I just turn it off and let it sit for a half an hour because just like a traditional baked lasagna, you need to let it sit at room temperature in order for it to really set because if you were to cut into it right away, it won't hold together at all. It'll kind of just fall apart. Now all I do is I just add a little bit of chopped herb I like parsley and basil. You can do one or the other. It doesn't really matter. And this is good to go. Now, you know meal time is precious to me. It is my favorite time of day and it just really frustrates me to think that there are millions of Americans that don't have the same opportunity to share a meal with their family. So I'm encouraging you to go out there this month, buy your red gold tomato product and help feed a family in need. And you know, when you're sitting at the dinner table, 
with this gorgeous thing, have, you know, make that time an important time to have conversations with your kids. Inform them about what's going on in their community, what they can do to help. And like I said, I'm going to link down below, I'm going to leave a link for you, helpcrushhunger.com, that tells you a little bit more about what you can do to get involved, how you can help, and how you can make a difference. All right, now I'm going to cut into this because it just smells unbelievably good. I just want to get a nice chunk, and now you know the first piece is always, I always say it's the cook's treat because it always comes out a little bit wonky because it's hard to get it out of a pan. You know, the first one's always the sacrifice, but that not a sacrifice to me. <laughs> that is just magnificent. Oh yeah, party in the house, yeah. A little bit of parsley on the top. All right, now, I like to use the diced tomatoes in this recipe, particularly because they don't give you too much um, excess liquid and therefore it helps the lasagna stay together a little bit better rather than just using all puree. This is just perfect. Look at that. I mean, that is a good layered lasagna right there. Am I right or am I right? Can you give this a bite? Mmm. So perfect. So hot. Never stopped me though. It is delicious. It's easy, time consuming, but you know what? It's a great weekend project and it's a wonderful meal to share with your loved ones. Go to lauraintheKitchen.com to get the written recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me. Help me crush hunger this month and I'll see you next time. Bye.